I stayed with him um, six months training. Um, I watched him dev develop Snowfall. Um, uh, these other projects, I won't, I won't name the other projects that he has coming out. And his, um, he still has these coming out. Um, he taught me everything. Mm. So, How to put for, it. so what's the next step after that? Like you, you, you basically was an understudy for six months. Yeah. Are you getting paid? Nah. And for them six months, I was homeless out there in LA. What's happening, good people? Welcome to another episode of First Generation Wealth Builders. So this time, man, I got my guy, Tommy Smalls, man. What's mm -hmm. happening, baby? Hey, chilling, man. Chilling, chilling, chilling. I appreciate you coming through, man. Tommy a little different. He a little different than a typical guest. Typically, got somebody in here that do real estate and or something like that. But, man, uh, we met. You don't even call me Eric, bro. Nah. <laughs> Smooth, man. Smooth. Oh, that's mm -hmm. funny. So, yeah. so now nah, we met uh, at was that club? What was it called over there on Eighty Sixth Street? Oxygen. Oxygen. Yeah, yeah. We met at Oxygen. You yeah. was managing. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I was somewhat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was DJing, and mm -hmm. so you know what I'm saying. That's how we met. Then from there, man, you started doing some shoots for me at the building downtown. Right. You remember with the car and yeah. everything? Yeah, yeah, no yeah. Doubt, yeah. No doubt. So you was on the camera then, and, and and today, man. You know what I'm saying? For those who don't know, tell us about who, what who is Tommy and what's Tommy doing right now? Um, Tommy Smiles. Uh, I do production, direct. Um, I work for uh, Paramount Pictures, um, but I do a lot of stuff on my own now. Like, gotcha. Um, as far as film is concerned, I mean that's my only thing is film. You know so. Um, anything that has to do with films, I'm probably, uh, that's probably what I'm doing. Gotcha. What, what are some dope films that you've done that we might know about? Uh, the Trap, um, which had Mike, Mike Epps and mm -hmm. T.I. and Tiana Taylor in it. Uh, Animal Kingdom, which is, uh, airing now. On a, dope. And then I have, um, it's a lot of projects, man. I go down the line. Gotcha. What's your <laughs> favorite one real quick? Favorite one? Mm-hmm. Um, I would say what I'm working on now, which is Animal Kingdom. Okay. Just because it's a series. And um, I like the people that I work with. I mean, it's a great crew. Um, the story is always evolving, so it keeps me on my toes. Mm. Yeah. So I would say that. Got you, got you. So let's go back, man, because you know what I'm saying? We met. I was about, that was definitely like 15 years ago, man. Yeah. What was your, how'd you tap into entrepreneurship, bro? Um, I mean, that goes way back, man. I used like, like I had barbershops and all that kind of stuff back in the day. Okay. Man, you okay. Know, back in but that's cool though. We want to know about that. Cause yeah. the, the truth is your failures made you who you are today. Uh, that's right. You know I mean, you gotta have those. They, they come along with it. So, know? so where was your barbershop at? Mid Hopper, 38th and Mid Hopper. Got you. Yeah. East side. East side. Far east side. Okay. Okay. By John Marshall. Yeah. Right across the street. Okay. Yeah. Got yeah. you. Got you. So did you have own a barbershop or you, did you cut hair? No, nah, I owned it. I started off at Kenny's, like Kenny's, like a long time ago. And he really taught me a lot about entrepreneurship because I just seen how he ran his business, how he built it into a franchise and how he left. Mm. He, he helped a little young guys coming out of barber school. You know? No doubt. He, shot, he, he taught them the business ways. Got you. So, um. Uh, yeah, he got me on to that. Got you. Now, what, what was your first encounter with the camera? <sighs> Man, I, I, I've been dibbling and dabbling in, in, with the camera since I was a kid. I was always intrigued by um, recreating images. I just didn't really know what to do with it. So mm. I would always see things in my life that I'd be like, damn, I wish I had my camera. So I started carrying one around all the time. So. And back then, there wasn't no social media, bro. There wasn't no social media. So I had these big, crazy cameras. Like, it was weird, and people looking at me crazy just because, you know, we grew up in the hood, so cameras ain't really... Uh, <laughs> ain't really, really welcome. Know, <laughs> you know, man. <laughs> hey, you better get that out. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> they really but, but for some reason, they let me do my thing. They let me uh, do what I do. Got you, got you. Well, do you remember your first project? Something like, you know, your first... You got hired out for a shoe or a video? Um... This was long, maybe 
23 years ago and I was working with Don, um, which I still do. Okay. Um, and he's a photographer here in, in the city. He's good, man. Um, I started working with him and I just kind of, he kind of mentored me and showed me how to, you know, um, how to work the camera and how to get the images out of my head mm. onto, you know, film or either uh, onto a, like, still photography. Understood. Yeah. Got you. How did you transition from still photography to video? Well, that kind of happened when I was at, uh, at the Stats, mm. when I was down there. So I, that building, as you know, is, is surrounded by artists. It is. It's all artists in there. So it's funny, like uh, the day that I moved in there, is the, the, that's, that was the day that my mother passed. Mm, so to hear that. So it was like a, I was lost for like a mm -hmm. long time, didn't know what to do. So I kind of moved in that building. You know, you ain't supposed to live in there. I was almost, when you came, mm -hmm. I was living in that joint. You oh, know what wow. I'm saying? Like, my, you, you know, and nobody ever knew that. No, nah, yeah, I didn't nobody, know that, even bro. People work that you people that own the joint, they you know what I'm saying? Wow. But I would just, you know, mom passed and it, it got weird for me. But I learned a lot in that building. It, you know, that I was around these artists like all day, all night. So uh I started it was a film company there and I just started um, you know, going into their spot and they kinda showed me how to, you know, uh the film part of it. Mm. Yeah. Got you. Who, uh, who, who, who inspires you in that area? In the film area? Yeah, yeah. It would have to be my uh, my second mentor, which was John Singleton. Mm. Yeah, he's passed away. Yeah. Got you. Yeah. What was your favorite film of his? Um, I guess it would be like, uh, <laughs> I guess everybody, Boys in the Hood. There, yeah, no yeah. doubt. Yeah. Oh, uh, because what he did was told a story of uh, day in life. Yeah, his life, what he seen. The same way I wanted to tell my story. Mm. You know, and uh, he showed me how to do that. Got Very you. Fast. Yeah. Got you. Got you. Got you. So, did you ever meet him? Yeah, that was my mentor. Mm. So it's a crazy story. Um, when I first went out to L.A., like I failed miserably. Wait, 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 when would you go? When you go out there? Um, this is the first time eight years ago. Got you. Yeah. So yeah. it's 21. You was out there since 13. Yeah. Okay. Bad. Mm -hmm. So now, so I was out there two years and, and failed and just left because mentally and physically, I just wasn't ready. I thought I was. Before you go too far, uh, like, you know what I mean? What, 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 what wouldn't you ready for? Say it again. What wasn't you ready for? Um, there? the speed, the speed mm -hmm. and intensity of, of, of what it is because, uh, it's the best of the best. Mm. It's the best of the best. They've been trained since kids out there. Like, you know what I'm saying? So going into that, that situation, you got, you like, you're already behind. So mm. <laughs> you got to figure out a way to catch up. And mentally and physically, you got to be, you got to go uh, double or triple what they going. Mm. So that's what I had to learn. So a friend of mine um, was like, man, um, well, I, I came back to uh, Indianapolis. Um, Worked at a factory, and I was like, "Nah, this ain't it. This can't be life. <laughs> this can't be it." <laughs> so a friend of mine, you know, he hollered at me. He's like, "Man, most people um, that you know trying to make that transition and come out here and do this, they um, they go to New York first and train on why? Wow. Um, because of speed and how um, intense it is in New York, how mean it is, the competition level, all that. You know, so I was like, uh, that's what I did." I moved to New York. For a so, year. so let me try to understand that. Uh -huh. So he's saying, as, as I'm listening to you, mm -hmm. like LA is like the the pinnacle, the best of the best. Best of the best. And well, so, when it comes to film, when it comes to yeah, film. Yeah. So then, your guy told you, let's go. I would recommend going to New York mm -hmm. to basically, you know, what I mean, hit the jungle real quick, That's right? And then get back to go out there. Therefore, yeah. you don't slap your head out there. That's right. Got you. So, yeah. so keep going. You was telling me though. So you went to New York. Yeah, because New York, you know, I, I mean, it, you're gonna live in some. Because I went broke. Mm. I went broke, um, and so you're gonna have to, you you either gonna get it or you ain't. You know, you're gonna uh, ride or die. Now, so so this is the second time I hear you hit yourself on the ground. 
You mm-hmm. on the ground. Yeah. What's your mind? What's your mind? It wasn't the last either. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't the last. What, what, what's your mindset like? Because somebody listening through this mm-hmm. is going through that, but they don't. They don't probably got that dog. But yeah. what? What gave you that that fuel, that fire to be like, nah, I, I can't go out like this? Um, again, it, it would have to be my mother. Mm. Just how she led her life, and and um, she just kind of inspired me. She, it was her, no, no, no doubt, no doubt. And I just, you know, I, I had to do something. So, what's going on in New York? Tell me about it. What's going on? New York. Um, so I, I moved to New York and moved into this little apartment with five other people, and and it was crazy. And um, um and then I, I did that for three months. Um, worked at a, a studio there, just as a, like a, um, a grip. I was like a grip there. What's a the grip? Um, you know, put the lights up. You know, help with the lights, rig little thing. Uh, gotcha. uh, you know, like if we was in here, like I would rig some lights up here. Got gotcha. you, Mike. You a grip, bro? Got gotcha. you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, well, he, yeah, no. I'm messing you know, with it. I'm messing yeah. with it. But go but, ahead. Uh, yeah. So I did that, and then um, and then I worked another job, and then I did little hustles and stuff around the city. I had to learn to do that. Uh, I had to learn how to not sleep. You know, what I'm saying I had to uh, physically. Hold um, on, hold on, hold on. How you learn how to sleep, bro? You don't get tired. Well, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, but but I had to, you know, day and night. You gotta push. Yeah. So. Uh, I had to start working out, you know what I'm saying? I started doing like, uh, you know, jogging, uh, marathons, anything I could do to, you know, to build it up. Do your dirty Yeah, side. yeah. So, uh, and mentally it was tough because, you know, everybody's kind of mean, you know, in that, you know, um, when you don't have anything to offer them, especially, you know, there. Mm. So, um, they was all mean. So you had to, you know, my skin got thicker, you know what I'm saying? So, uh, and you know, like, if you don't come from nap, it's cool. Like, you know, I'm pretty much cool. You can kind of cool out. It's, you just really can't there, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, um, yeah. So I did that for a year, and um, and then I moved back to Indy for two months, and then I took back off to uh, to L.A. All right. So, why did you why did you come to Indy before going to L.A.? Family, kids. Like I still had kids here. Okay. You know, and the only way I was able to even do this, I just want to say this, um, my ex wife, um, she was just a strong woman, and she was like, you know. Uh, I had, you know, I had two girls and a, and a son, and she just was like, well, "Do whatever you gotta do, mm. you know, I'm a, I'm gonna hold this down." Mm. So that helped a lot. I just want to say that. Hey, Put shout that out, out to, yeah. to, 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 to her. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah. There it is. Yeah. Okay. So then you cut back out. Do you have, you know, what I'm saying, any connections out there when you cut back out? Um, I had connections, which I, you know, originally when I went out there, I was like, you know, the connections I had, which is, you know, my buddy Mike I, Epps. Um, he would do anything that I would ask him to do, but my mentality when I went back is, I'm not gonna ask nobody to do it because if, if 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 it's gonna happen, it's gonna happen off of me or you know it'd be weird. Um, so um, <clears throat> that was the only connection. Mm. That was the only connection connection I had, and um, in in videos videos and stuff like that, I you know I had connections in that world, music, but. Far as film, nah. Mm. So, so what's your mind state though? Going back out there for the second time, like what's different this time? I, I'm not gonna lose, mm. no matter what. And I, you know, it's no stop, because you know, I'm I'm getting up here in age. Um, I, you know, I got these three kids. I gotta take care. I gotta make it happen. Um, and people back home believing in me. Mm. So. It, it, it really wasn't no options. All right, so you so you get in, you you about to you about to try to penetrate the market on your own. Yeah. What's the first step that you take? Uh, the first step I took was when I went to a um, I went to a uh, well, I was working a little odd jobs there, um, but I went to a scene with Mike, um, and it was uh, the Real Husbands of Hollywood okay. on Paramount's lot, and when I went in there. Every director, when we walked up on the set and went in the sound stage, every director that I ever looked up to was in this room. Mm, can you name some names? Producers: uh, uh, Dave Robinson, uh, uh, John Singleton, um, Dion Taylor, um, Quentin Tarantino. It was all 
in this room when I walk in. Uh, are you are lady. you starstruck? Are you like man? You act like you've been here before. I was starstruck. Okay, but I was still acting like I've been here before. <laughs> <There> <laughs> you is. know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. It was more like man, and then um, so the scene lasted about mm, like four five hours. Like you know what I'm saying? It was all these people in here, like you know, and then um, you know, everybody was kind of busy. Um, and then I just happened to sit next to uh, Stan Latham. Which is the the producer? Like he does a lot of crazy stuff, and um, uh, he was talking on the phone, and uh, uh, he was telling somebody, "You gotta, you gotta make this, you gotta make it move when you when you gotta do it." So I'm listening to him say that, and then I see John Singleton on the other side of the room. So I just went over there and just was like, "Look, man, I love what you do. Yeah, like, you know what I'm saying, and I, I I would really love to just sit up under you and learn what you do. You know what I'm saying, and." and I'm trying to go the same route you're going, basically. And he was like, yeah, man, that's cool. He was like, uh, yeah, uh, I'm shooting something up here next week. Just come on, come on, come on, come through. Mm. Yeah. And I'm excited. I'm like, ah, oh, this is dope. Scenes over everything. Then I get in the car. You know what I'm saying? I tell Mike what's happening. I was like, man, dude, so I can come back, man. You know, uh, how you feel about it? He's like, yeah, that's cool. What day you going? Then I realized he didn't even tell me no day. <laughs> No time or nothing. Like, you know what I'm saying? I'm like, oh, man. And hey, you got his phone number? Nothing. Can I tell you this? That's the same thing that happened that John Singleton did when he was trying to get Ice Cube for Boys in the Hood. Yeah. yeah. He forgot to get Cube yeah. phone number. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah. But go ahead, though. You, so, so, so how'd y'all reconnect? So, um, and at the same time, like, um, I was getting kicked out. I was going to get kicked out of my crib there, like the, mm-hmm. the little place I was staying at. And so that Monday, I just went on up there uh, and then I don't have no transportation. And I lived like seven miles from Paramount. Mm-hmm. So I walked up there the first day, Monday. And, you know, Paramount is huge. Like this, this is a huge lot. Like this is like um, blocks and blocks square and it's built like a fort, mm-hmm. like, you know, all around. And it has four different entrances, like you know. So I, so I'm like, okay, maybe I'll just see him up here. I stay oh. up here all day and just walk around this building, just walk around this building, and you know he never comes. Like I never see anything, and then I'm out there sweating. It's, it's burning up. I did that, walked home. I did this for, I went until Thursday, the same routine. So how many days is that? Three, four, four. Yeah. Okay, gotcha. Yeah. And then that Thursday, I got up there, and then it was like, uh, I'm walking around there, it's like, uh, it's getting late, it's like 6.30, and by this time, I'm mad, like, you know, the nap time, I'm coming out at me now, <laughs> you got me, you know what I'm saying, you got me bent, like, I'm not, I'm not, like, you know what I'm saying, so I'm, I'm angry at this point, like, he, he, you know, he made a fool out of me, like, you know, mm. yeah, so I'm, uh, you know, as I'm walking, uh, I just hear a voice, and it, he was like, um, What's up, man? You know, he's pulling up in the lot. My back is turned to him. Somehow he knew who I was. Mm. And this was John Singleton. And he was like, come on, man. Uh, I jumped in the car with him. And from there, from that point, um, he taught me everything I needed to know about filming. Mm. I stayed with him um, six months training. Um, I watched him develop snowfall. Um, uh, these other projects, I won't, I won't name the other projects that he has coming out. And his, um, he still has these coming out. Um, he taught me everything. Mm. So, How to put for, it. so what's the next step after that? Like, you, you, you basically was an understudy for six months. Yeah. Are you getting paid? Nah. And for them six months, I was homeless out there in L.A. Homeless. Where are you staying at, bro? I was on the streets. Oh, wow. I was on the streets. Because... I wasn't doing no roommates. I wasn't doing that. And I had, in my mind, I'm going to stack up. I was homeless, man. So how are you eating? Well, I would go in the stores and stuff like that. I would, I, I would have I had money for food, like stuff like that. Gotcha. Yeah. Um, but crib, nah. And this nah, is 2013. Yeah. Got you. Yeah. All right. So um, um, I did that. Um, and then as I'm working with him, um, because I was homeless, we, you know, his projects was on Paramount's lot. And he never knew I was homeless. I never told anybody. I never told my kids back home. Nobody ever knew this. You know, they thought I was good. Um, 
Have you ever told anybody this? Nah, this is this, this first time. Teddy, you don't even know. Nobody knew this. Okay. Yeah. We listen. Yeah. So, um, as I'm working on Paramount's lot, uh, I mean, as I'm working with him, because I'm homeless, after I'm done with John, I would let him leave and I would just stay on the lot. You mm. know what I'm saying? I ain't really supposed to be there, like, but I would just stay on the lot. So I would just sneak my way on to different sound stages where they were shooting films or, you know, TV shows and stuff like that. And I kind of stood out because, of, you know, you know, and this is like a predominantly white situation. Um, and uh, so I would just kind of sneak in to these places. And at first they would just like, they would do little stuff like uh, I would stand in the back and they would kind of just put their bodies in front of the monitors and stuff so you couldn't see what they were doing. You know what I'm saying? Mm. So I kind of just kind of weaseled my way in, like, you know what I'm saying? And, um, and start talking to these people and start, you know, becoming a friend of these people that they thought that I worked, I actually worked here and I, I, I wasn't even working there. I was just on the lot. So I would just start helping with projects and, and learning. Um, I would sit up under the cinematographers, you know what I'm saying? I even, uh, 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 became a roommate with a cinematographer just to learn, um, how it all works. Mm. Um, so I did that into the point where they finally end up giving me a job. <laughs> I finally get a job. <laughs> I finally end up working there. You know what I'm saying? That's, that's like, okay, you've been here long enough, yeah, man. You know uh, can saying? you fill out this W-9 so yeah. we can get your paycheck, bro? <laughs> yeah, man. That's cra- it's crazy how it worked out like that. Like, it was just, you know. So, for somebody listening, um, what, what would you say to somebody young uh, that they could, you know, something they could do to, to skip that part? Cause it's cause uh, from from the perspective from the outside, right? Mm-hmm. And I'm not a film guy, but you know I hear the stories. Mm-hmm. It's everybody comes here chasing their dream. Yeah, less than one percent right. ever even get it. That's right. You you have nothing, and you hanging out at the set. Mm-hmm. So you know what would you tell somebody new? Like you know that's that's that, that, that's their aspiration. Yeah. Like how do you how do you even create that type of opportunity for for yourself? Yeah. Again. Um. I would say you, you would you, you have to be relentless with it. Your 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 drive your drive has to be relentless. And the bad thing is, well, I guess the gift of curse about it is um you gotta be totally focused on it. You can't ain't no looking down, ain't no uh, uh, it's failure ain't an option as far as the overall. Mm-hmm. You're gonna have little Things that happen, that, right, right, you know, right. Setbacks. It's a roller coaster. Um, yeah, I would say you know you got to be relentless with it. Mm. It's war. Got you. It's war. You got to look at it like that. It's war. So my mentality when I'm when I'm there, um, it's it's always war. That's why when I come back to the city, I, you know, I'm relax. It's cool and everything. Cause out there, it's 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 war. Got you. So, you know. I've talked to Mike about this, mm-hmm. and you know what I'm saying. Like, there's uh, there's skill, mm-hmm. there's will, and then there's discipline. Mm-hmm. I will call the drive, the discipline to stay yeah. on course. Uh, yeah, yeah, discipline. So. All right. So, people go to USC, go to their school. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying. Go to other schools to you know yeah. take acting, film, whatever. Now, if they got this skill, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying, like. Like, is it about who you know, or is it about the skill? Uh, nah, it's about who know you. Mm. How there. do you establish that? Yeah, it's, it's yeah, it's about them seeing because they see it. Like producers, you know, they 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 can tell who who's who mean this shit. You know, who mm. who really means it. Um, and they can tell somebody just there, you know, trying to get on. Or they, they can see it in their eyes because they've been through it. They, you know, if somebody's a producer, they they didn't been through it. They didn't been through it. So they can see, they can spot it, and um, to get in those positions, you got they got to see that fire in you. Now, you said they got to know you. Yeah. How do you establish your name for yourself if you're from Indiana? Man, that's I mean, really, that's a that's a good question. Um, I appreciate that, bro. That's the ultimate compliment you could give me as an interviewer. <laughs> 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 I'm just kidding though, but nah though. I mean, for real though. You yeah. said they gotta know you. How, how do you establish that? I mean, you got YouTube, you got different ways, but yeah, you know what I mean. Um, uh, willing to invest in yourself, far as um, putting in time 
what people would call free work interning and stuff like that. Got you. Because if you're just there and you're there all the time, they seeing you all the time, they, they seeing that grinding, they seeing you pick up this big old light and move it, you know what I'm saying, 30 feet. I want him on my team. Mm. What's his name? What you do, man? Uh, you know? And that's kind of how they work. They want to see that. Got you. Yeah. Got you. Got you. So you got the job. Yeah. All right. Did uh did you get you a spot? Since you ain't doing roommates? Uh after a while I did. Got gotcha. you. Um, oh, so you say you stack it, fuck it. Yeah. <laughs> so um at the yeah, because it, it was you know, it's not it's it's I was I was learning out there on the streets. You wow. know, because I I lived where where my little tent was, it was way out, you know, it's about Venice, you know. Mm. So I it's so many different people out there and all these people like and they was homeless, but they was just like crazy smart or crazy talented. They just for whatever reason, you know, they would get on drugs or uh or some people just you'd be surprised. Some people just live out there because they that's where they want to be at. They want to be carefree like that. Um but I learned a lot out there. And then I did get a spot. It was because one of the producers, uh, which is Kenya Burris, uh, he let he let me move into his crib. Like he he went across the seas for a while, he let me move in his crib. Um so I'm living in this crib and um I mean, it's a beautiful crib. Like, it's a beautiful, dope crib. And then I go to work at Paramount. Um, and then um, this is when the wildfires was going on. Mm. Um, but what time is this now? This is um, this is uh, 17. Okay. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, 17. Um, I look on TV and, you know, it's getting closer and closer to the crib, like mm. where I where I where I'm staying at, and all, everything I have is in this crib. Like everything I own, th that I've accumulated. Um, you talking equipment then? Yeah, equipment, hard you know, hard drives. Like that was the most important thing. I, everything is in there. So I'm watching this on TV, and I'm like, hey, this is getting close. I've got to get up out of here. Like you know, so mm. so I get on the highway, get on the one on one, and I'm getting up as soon as I'm going to pull out the exit. The police blocks. Uh, the street outs. You can't get through. So all of us are stuck on this highway watching this fire. You know what I'm saying? So I'm like, oh, man, this is crazy. So I, I see that we're going to be stuck there. I jumped out of the car, went down, uh, went up the mountain, which you had to go to a mountain to get to my crib. I go around there, and the whole crib is gone. Like, it's gone. Oh, shit. Gone. I lost everything. So I went through that. That was a whole thing. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Wow, how you bounce back from something like that? Man, that was uh uh good people around me. Mm. Yeah. What's your mentors Family. like? Uh then it got rough, man. I was like, man, this probably ain't for me, man. But um honestly it kinda it it, it kinda cause I was getting a little different then. I was I was kinda my focus had got off. What's different, bro? Um I always wanted to come back here and do something in the city. And I start kind of getting mad at the city because little things that I would try to do and people that I would try to help um, would kind of let me down. So I kind of gave up on the city. And I was like, nah, I ain't even coming back. I don't even, like, you know, I'm done with it. Uh, and I think when that happened, I think that was God or my mother letting me know, hey, you get back. You know what I'm saying? You're supposed to be on something else. You ain't going to just come out here and, and just live a certain kind of way. You got you got something to do. Mm. You got something better to do. Um, so it changed my focus back to I'm doing this for a greater cause. Got you. Yeah. Got you. What was the next breakthrough? Um. Then I had got. Uh, that's when uh, I believe. Um. Yeah, they caught me in for the development of um, um, Animal Kingdom. Got you. So this is so. This is recent, right? Well, they started working on it back then. Got you. When no, is this? This is eighteen. Uh, this is the end of seventeen. Okay, got yeah, you. Okay, okay, got you. Seventeen. Got you. All right. So, like, as you're going through this, you know what I'm saying? You're bouncing back. Mm -hmm. What's a day in a life like for you when you have something like Animal Kingdom? Like, you know what I mean? What time are you up in the morning? Yeah. Like, what's the day like? Because you know we don't. I, I see your posts here and there, yeah. you know what I'm saying? But you don't post a lot. Yeah. So, like, man, bring us to a day in a life because we all got this, you know, vision of what it's like. Yeah. And I know you get it. It must be nice. Yeah. But boy, don't understand everything oh, that you just explained. Yeah. 
So he probably had like I I get up like five thirty and then I got to run because I got to get the blood going. So I you know I get a run in probably hour, um, hour, hour and a half get my thoughts together, um, and then you got to be on set at least you know seven in the morning with fresh ideas. You know you do you got to do your daily and stuff like this. But shooting day, then we got to be on location. Um, you know so you got to make sure everybody who's sick. What's going on? Uh, who's sick today? Who got COVID today? Like, uh, mm. um, what do we have to change up? What actors freaking out? What uh, what lights have went out? Like, um, and it's always problems every day. <laughs> like, it's like it's no way around it. Like, it's, it, no matter what the budget is, it's always problems. It's always, I tell Mike, I was like, man, it's always the elements killing us when we trying yeah. to film. When we trying to do Instagram videos. What's hey, the man. elements? Yeah, got yeah, you though. Yeah, anything that can go wrong is gonna go wrong. No matter what the budget is, I don't care. Like it's it, it's gonna be the same thing. Yeah. <laughs> so the key is just being ready for it. So you just try to prepare mentally for you know somebody to freak out or or something to go out or. Gotcha. You, you know. just got pushed through. Yeah. So yeah. like you, so now you got your checkups, you know, on all your inventory. Yeah. Then what you doing next? Politics. Mm. You know, um, making uh, this actor feel good. You know. Um, uh, talking to this uh, grip guy over here to make sure his head right. Talking to the cinematographer to make sure his, you know, he can he he don't have any problems like uh, at home or whatever. Like it's 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 politics. It's, mm. it's, it, that's seventy percent of it is politics. That's what I had to learn. That's like anything. Yeah, and it's hard because nobody care about you. Like you know, it's you got to make sure everybody else is right. So yeah, got you. And I'm not a politician. So I had to, you know what I'm saying? I had to learn it. I don't even like talking to people. So uh, I had to, I had to get over that, you know? So, um, yeah. And then, you know, shooting and then, um, so the shoots probably last until they can go until nine, 10 o'clock at night. You know what I'm saying? Um, then you got to do after the shoots is over, then you got to do politics to make sure, you know, people come in the next day. Right. Because mm. people, so you're doing, you damn near uh, a babysitter with a camera. Yeah, yeah, uh. yeah. Got you, got you. Now, I gotta ask, what makes you better than the next? I wouldn't say it's a it's a better, but uh, I'm out work you when it comes to this. In what aspect? Every way. Every way. I'm mean, out work you like like. They look at us out there. They be they they always, no matter what, we got that stigma. You know, we we might we gonna be late. We gonna get it done. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? They 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 look at us like that. So, in my head, I'm gonna be the first one there. Every time, what whatever shoot it is, whatever situation it is, whatever meeting it is, I'm gonna be there before you, and I'm gonna outwork you, um, mentally and physically. Got you. Got you. How does how does Tarantino, Singleton, how how do they how do they grow their personal brand to distinguish themselves in a crowd of so many? Um, I think it's with their style, um, and they don't compromise the quality in 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 their style. When you say style, can you talk about that a little bit more? Um, it, no, it might be a way they you know that they like Tarantino. He likes to. He, he likes to get recreate scenes from you know the fifties and stuff like that. He likes to mm -hmm. you know grab a lot of different people people th uh, scenes and segments and make them his own. And his fetishes or whatever, he's getting it all across in, on the screen, and he don't compromise. He you know, rock and roll, you know, action, mm -hmm. you know, uh, blood, 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 and he over the top, you know. Uh, and I think that brand. It, you know, it worked for him. Mm. And Singleton, um, he draws straight from his heart. Everything's from his heart. Like if, if he ain't feeling it, if he ain't feeling it, or, or he's never felt it before, he's not gonna do it. He's not even gonna be involved in the project. Got you. Yeah. So basically, his uh, his movies are basically a part of him. A part of him. Or he's not doing it. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. So that's the point that I'm getting into now. I'm just if I don't feel it. 
or I've never felt it before, I, I don't know what it's supposed to feel like, then I probably ain't gonna do it. Gotcha. Just because I don't wanna um I don't wanna uh I don't wanna mess it up. Got you. Tell yeah. me, tell me went from homeless to bougie, bro. You, you, <laughs> you, hear, that, you hear that real quick? Hey, you know? Yeah, man. <laughs> now, um, so as you as you doing this, do you develop like you know a list of like some of your favorite actors? Um, no, nah. because um, well, some I guess I guess yeah, a couple, a couple. Give me your favorite actors, bro. That you work with? That I work with? Yeah. Mm. I'd be careful then. <laughs> hey man, I tell you it's politics, man. Hey, man it's say it's cool, play, man. Yeah. Hey, it's all for podcasting, people. It's all yeah. for podcasting. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> he be back politicking tomorrow. You be back. Yeah. Yeah, man. Um, um I don't know, man. I'm gonna let you pass on that yeah, one. Let me pass on that, man. <laughs> Who would you like to work with? Um Man, believe it or not, man, it's people here in the city that don't even know the actors that mm. I want to work with. I, identify that. Like, how do they know? Yeah. I mean, how do because you see that and they, and they don't? It's their personality, you know? That, and I had to learn that again from Mike. Like, he just, he grabs on to people that, from the city. And he that's where he builds his characters from, like, from these characters here. Um... And it's a lot of the one thing that we do have is a lot of characters, man. There's some wild dudes here, man. And some and I feel like my Epps gonna re recreate JF one day. Yeah, yeah, I mean <laughs> <laughs> with a cigarette bug hanging. Yeah, yeah man. That's my guy. But let me go back to it. Swift told me that you called him about his daughter. Yeah. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So like man, that girl there, man. She got that's character. what I'm saying. People like that, man, is Oh man, this amazing personality. And then being around all these people, I was like, man, I, it's people back home that's just like this. And they just extra, but they don't realize because it's not around them. Like, mm -hmm. you know, no, nobody's making movies, man. So why would I pursue this situation? Um, but it's some amazing people here, man. You know what I'm saying? Have you reached out to any? Uh, a couple. But, uh, you know. You said that with some year. negative energy, though, bro. Uh, well, it. it, it it was negative for me at first because I, I looked at it a certain way. I was like, "Why they don't want to work? Like, why they, why, you know?" And I had to get over that part. Not everybody's yeah. not everybody's comfortable being uncomfortable. Yeah, yeah, and and that's the thing you got to get used to that. Number one, because your eyes gonna be uncomfortable. Ain't about you. So, so when you propose an opportunity to somebody, mm -hmm. how does that come across um, on the phone? Like, you know, hey, yo, bro, like I got this opportunity that you should take advantage of. Yeah. Uh, you know, I think the first thing is they're gonna be like, "How am I gonna get there in no money?" Right? Yeah, yeah. Does that close the door? Um, not well. Sometimes, but people are funny, man. Like, um, but and you got like some people just be in different places in their life, Facts. you know, different That's, different stages that. in their life. Just like me, like I probably like back then, somebody said the same thing to me. I probably you know what the, but um, the way my Business kind of work is just, I mean, from my standpoint, it's like, um, it's or, it's organic with people. When they, mm. If I feel them, then I, I'll call them up and, and say this and that. And sometimes it works out, man. I've had some good situations with people like, you know, that, 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 that has worked out. Got so, you. Yeah. Got you. Now, um, you said to me that, you know I mean? You've been working with Paramount. Yeah. And that you got some of your own things popping. Mm -hmm. um, you know what I'm saying? I, I, we won't throw the cat out the bag, but mm -hmm. like, what what type of projects would you like to do in the near future? Especially like, you know what I'm saying, around here? Independent. Independent. Yeah. Yeah, I don't want to be tied into companies anymore. That, Why? Um, I see what it does for um, people, uh, uh, mass people like, uh, it feeds, it's like a house, like, you know what I'm saying? It's like build, like movies, like a house. Like you gotta build, you, you know, you gotta, you gotta build it from the foundation up. And then if you do it right, um, it's a, it's a dope situation. You can eat off of it for forever. Mm -hmm. And um, these companies, I guess I got, I, I'm I got tired of kind of uh, making others rich. Mm -hmm. um, and that's what I've been doing. So independently, um, you know, uh, Creatively, I can do what I want. I have the freedom to do what I want. 
and to create the projects that I want to, because it's a lot of projects that I, I, I could have done and that we have produced that's never seen the light of day because they take, they take control of it and put their spin on it and, and turn it into something that it was, wasn't supposed to be. Gotcha. So do you write? No. Nah. No, nah, I don't write. I create. I can create a, a a situation and somebody writes it for me. Okay. And um and we and we make it happen, but um, no, nah, I don't write. Gotcha. Nah. How would somebody like you know like yourself acquire lenders or or, or finances, capital backing to, to 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 put a production together? Um. See, that's the line producer. It's a line producer. that's all the the budgeting. Um, finding the finances for it and everything, but, but they have to see a. Um, you have to put together a deck and. Um, What's a deck? Um, it's kind of a description of of what this movie is going to look like. Um, who you want in it? How long it's going to take to shoot? It's the whole breakdown of this of this. Of this Almost movie. like a business you, plan. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. Um, but it's kind of it's more visual. It's a it's a whole production, uh, wrapped into like three minutes, you know, mm. and you just, you know, you got to make it easy for them. Like they got to see it, see you gotta, it. You got you know? to get them to buy in. Yeah. Yeah. Got you. Got you. So, yeah. No, that's dope. That's dope. So I saw that you was coming with something. Yeah. You know what I mean? I don't want to give you, how you giving out dates. Yeah. <clears throat> but you know what I'm saying? When can we expect something from you uh, independently? Yeah. Um, we got uh, like three situations going on right now um, with the city, with Indianapolis. Um, I'm trying to be careful here. You good? <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> so I would say uh, within the next six months. Yeah. Got you. Yeah. Got you. Is it? And it's it's your project. Yeah. Got yeah. you. Along got with you. others, but I majority, got you. Yeah. Yeah. Got I got you. control of it. Understood, yeah. understood. So Congratulations. Fails, uh I I'll take that and if you succeed, I'm taking that too. Yeah. So, I like it. Yeah. I like it. And you don't ever see yourself going back to work for like a Sony or Paramount after I won't if, say never because I work I, you know, I work on projects, you know, if the right people is involved. But uh as far as, you know, just working there and uh I don't you know I, okay. I, we, we won't say never, but yeah, that ain't it, where I, I wanna be at. I got you, got yeah. you. So something that I want to uh, go back to, um, to mm -hmm. then go forward. Yeah. You know, I missed the transition. You met, uh, you know, there was growth there. Mm -hmm. We went from uh, obviously being homeless, being an intern. Yeah. Got a job, boom. Mm -hmm. Then got opportunity. Mm -hmm. uh, then obviously you lost everything in the fire. Yeah. Then there was, the, the, then there was uh, uh, the sequel that you've been on, mm -hmm. but. What um when did you start becoming when did you start getting consistent work? Mm, it was probably two years ago. I started really being consistent. So you've been out there for, for eight, eight years. Yeah. And you just now start getting just consistent now. work. Just now. Gotcha. <laughs> just, just now, you know. What 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 leaf turned over? Um I think it was uh with the success of Animal Kingdom. Um Things started going good. I started my name started getting out there. Gotcha. Within the producers, understood around. So uh, they know what they're gonna get with me. Gotcha. They know how I'm gonna work. So, um, and they know what I'm a. You know, they they know what's gonna happen with me. Mm. Got you. Yeah. Now, with that, you know, how do you schedule work? Because that's a you got different. It's a series, right? Mm -hmm. You know, what if you get called for another movie? How do you yeah. manage the time and you know how does that work? Uh, well, I got an agent now, so they kind of do that, and a manager, so they kind of do that. Understood. And they let me know what's what's coming on next, and they they bring uh, projects to me and ask me, do I want to be involved? And then and then they they schedule it. Cause Understood. I mess it all up. Congratulations, yeah. brother! <laughs> right on, man. Congratulations. Yeah. That's that's big. Yeah. Uh, Mike. One day you're gonna be my agent, bro. I don't wanna talk to the people. <laughs> <laughs> Man. But uh, all right, now, so yeah. that's a blessing. And, yeah. and, and so I gotta ask though, uh, just because I'm not familiar, what is, uh, once you're getting consistent work, what is the average income of somebody getting consistent work in Hollywood 
you know, doing what you do? It's up and down. It's up and down. So I would say, (laughs) uh, you can get like a six week project or something like that. You can get anywhere from a hundred thousand to a, you know, um, upwards close to a million. Like, you know, it's just according to how the, how the, how it's structured and how long it lasts and what they need you for. Um, because I, I do a lot of different things. It, if I'm on the production end of it, you know, if uh, if I'm one of the producers, which I, that's kind of what I'm uh, want to do, like I want to just stay in that that area, um, then it can get up there, man. Got you, yeah. got you. Would you suggest formal education to learn yeah, what you do? Yeah, definitely, definitely. Some type of course, some type of you know business film. Um, it, but you know what, man? Like uh, the blessing everybody got now is just so much stuff is on YouTube. Like you can learn a lot of stuff on YouTube. But um, intern up under people, um, yeah, education is key. Got you. Yeah, got you. Got you. Um, I gotta ask, man. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? As I was telling you, man, entrepreneur to entrepreneur, you basically find dope people like yourself, mm-hmm. uh, talk about their stories, and then really try to like understand their relationship with real estate. Yeah, you didn't have one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like like you literally yeah. mentioned your tent. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Today, uh, you know, do you rent on what what you got going on? Well, I just bought a crib, man. Congratulations. Yeah. That's big right though. On, you know, that's man. big. That's yeah. big. Right on, In LA though? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh. <laughs> oh, man. Oh. 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 Man. <laughs> man. Oh. Yeah. Got you, got you. Congratulations. Right what on, part of LA? Man. It's in Hollywood. Got yeah. you. Yeah. Got you, got you. Yeah. So like yeah, close around the corner from work. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's now, me, man. is that your first property? First property, man. Well, yeah. I, I own uh, a couple cribs in, in here in the city. Got you. So you got yeah. some rentals? Yeah. Got you. Yeah. Okay. Do you yeah. got somebody managing those? No. Well, nephews. Got you. How's that working? It's all right, man. It's all right. That's a whole nother thing. <laughs> <laughs> he yeah. said, we ain't going to do it like that over here. Now, now, do you, um, you know, do you, you know, like, per my experience, because I teach people how to get free rental properties, bro. Um it's been somebody like yourself, your schedule is just crazy. Um, what's paid off for me just just sharing with you mm. is to have a property manager, bro. Mm. Cause I got five companies. Yeah. And at the end of the day, you know what I mean, we wanna reap the benefits of the fruit. That's right. You know, that we uh mm. uh so and I think that having a property manager, you're not getting calls about toilets. Yeah. You're not having to deal yeah. with family and disagreements mm. and or money issues mm. or Man, I did all of this and you ain't doing nothing yeah. to kind of kill that. Yeah, it's rough, man. Putting a property manager in place may be a situation, maybe yeah. something, uh, an asset that may be able to help you. Mm-hmm. One, yeah. streamline that. Mm-hmm. It'll also keep the, they keep the numbers. Yeah. They maintain the property mm-hmm. um, and things like that, man. So, like, you know, I mean, uh, I could get, give you a, a name, you know, therefore when we get out. Man, but cl- that would be perfect, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Climb I property. was going to ask you about that. That was crazy. <laughs> I was going to ask you about that. What other questions you got about real estate, bro, bro? Um, yeah, I, yeah, we talk about that. Yeah. Believe it or not, somebody listening got the question you got. Mm-hmm. That's why I really asked it here. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Just because, like, a lot of people want to know, like, hey, how can I expand my rental portfolio? Or what mm-hmm. can I do? What's the best way? Right. You know what I mean? But, like, just hearing you out, you know what I mean? And we don't got to dive in. We could talk afterwards. But I think that, you know what I mean, that's something that could help you. Immediately, if you're having issues yeah. with people managing it Definitely, right now. Man. Definitely, you know what I mean? Yeah. And like yeah. I said, they give you monthly reports. Mm-hmm. Therefore, all you got to do is look at a piece of paper yeah, that's, to that's see if it's want, plus, or, plus or negative. Yeah, there you go. That's what I need right there, man. <laughs> there there yeah. it is. There it is. Now, about the process buying a crib in LA, man. Woo. How'd yeah. you find your agent? Um, It was this lady named Linda Carbrig. Like, uh, she's really cool. And she worked with a couple of my friends out there. Um. And uh, she did it for me, man. She uh, she was an agent and found the spot for me, man. It was like you found you got your first property, or you went through a couple. You seen a couple that you didn't like or got outbid. You got your first one that you wanted. No, not that wasn't the first one. We was we was probably looking for um, like six months, and mm-hmm. then them was like too high. Or was you know the play? They, I just didn't feel it, like you know. Um, and yeah, probably about six months, and then we found this one. Um, she found this one and it was like, I was like, this is it. You know, mm-hmm. the view was beautiful. It was, you know, big enough and small enough for me. Um, gotcha. it was set up exactly how I wanted it. Um, it was a blessing, man. Got you. Yeah. Dope, dope. Congratulations. Yeah. That's big. Yeah. Did you ever think that you would live in Hollywood? Nah, man. Hollywood? Nah. <laughs> what? <laughs> man, never. 
I never right. thought like I, I I thought about it. You know, I had these you know it, dreams. I guess like anybody, you know, anybody do. Um, but I, I, I it actually happening? Nah, mm -mm. nah. Got you. Um, one thing that you said earlier, you talked about your age and how you have to put a sense of urgency. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? One thing I want to tap into, man, and we could we could continue after uh, we're done. You know what I'm saying? As you're making the money you're making, despite whatever number that is, it's it's, it's still it's still a blessing. You know, I tell everybody that's in their seat to ensure that they invest. And I feel that we all have a relationship with real estate. Mm -hmm. Everybody you know mm -hmm. has a relationship with real estate. And either they pay for real estate and or they make money off real estate. Yeah. I would recommend that you learn how to make money from real estate. Yeah. And allow real estate to create the freedom when you're done working. Mm-hmm to be able to still have the same lifestyle you have today. Right. Uh, you know, so that's just something. And so, yeah, I agree. You know, man, I want to thank you, man, for coming through, man, sharing some of this story, brother. That's, yeah, that's, 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 that's definitely like super dope, man. Um, yeah. Before I go though, man, what's something, what's something else that we don't know about Tommy Smalls? Um, it's very unique to Tommy. Uh, you know what I plan on doing? I'm gonna tell you this. Uh, when I turn 50, I'm gonna take my, I'm gonna take a plane and just ride around this whole world, man, and just experience just the culture of different cultures. That's what I want to do. Got you. What inspires you to do that? Um, I guess from traveling with work, I would always go to these places and these great places, and I would always see them for a day or you know a couple hours as I'm working. So. I would always want to see what these places, you know, London, all these places. I always wanted to see what these different countries was doing, but I would only see them for like a few minutes. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I just want to revisit all these places and really learn them, the cultures of, of these people. It's crazy yeah. that you said that, right? Yeah. So when I first got into, uh, I've always been an entrepreneur. Yeah. But when I started making money with her hair, mm -hmm. and I was like, uh, I'm not as smart as I thought I was. Yeah. And I need to get in the room yeah. with other intelligent individuals yeah. and start taking courses. Mm -hmm. What I was doing was I was going to a course every month, literally. But I would go to the city. I'd be in and out, be in and out because I was coming back to my business because yeah. I was working in my business. Mm -hmm. And so about 2016, I made it a must. Every city I visit, I get there early to enjoy the city yeah. before I go to class. Yeah. Yeah. So I still in, I'm still in the classroom, but I, I've now got to see wherever I went. Yeah. And I got to enjoy it. Mm -hmm. And so I start enjoying work more when I could actually enjoy the travel. Yeah. So like, you know, yeah. it's a little different than yours, but yeah. I understand now yeah. uh, your, your, why that though. Mm -hmm. Man, thank you for coming out, man. And also thank you for watching another episode of Entrepreneur to Entrepreneur. If you're looking to start investing into real estate, don't know how and or need some mentorship, make sure to check out the mentorshipcalls.com. Basically, Every Monday through Friday, we're talking about everything wholesale. We're talking about wholesale acquisitions, rehabs, financing, and we could even help you finance your first deal. You could also link up with other entrepreneurs that are trying to invest. Therefore, you can get in a room with like-minded individuals, and that's how we all grow. Tap in, man. Make sure to tell a friend to tell a friend to share, like, and, man, enjoy. We appreciate you for uh, enjoying this podcast with us. Tap in.